welcome to this video on constructing simultaneous linear equations, which is a continuation of a series of videos I'm doing for the Cambridge Essentials course, uh, which I'm currently teaching to my students. Uh, now, if you don't want to know if it's a Cambridge Essentials course, don't worry about it. Maths being a universal language allows us to have all of this knowledge uh, applied throughout all sorts of different textbooks and learnings and whatever else. So basically, if you're dealing with simultaneous equations and they're now giving you worded questions, that's what this is all about. Hello. Are you new? Have I seen you before? No, <laughs> not really. Or I have, and you're going, shut up. Yes, it's really good to have you if you are new. Do me a favor. There's a red arrow over there that says subscribe or show me you're watching. Um, it'd be greatly appreciated if you wouldn't mind clicking that button and subscribing to my channel and clicking the little notifications. Then you're going to know when I upload new videos in this series. All right, really, really good to see you. Now, back to the learning, I suppose. I've been very needy asking for help. And by the end of this lesson, Hopefully you'll know what a simultaneous equation is. If you don't, there is a video loading up there, which is the previous video in this series that you can open and have a look at. Uh, but basically, simultaneous equations are a way of having two equations with two unknowns that we're undoubtedly trying to find the solution to. Now, in most cases, they are expressed using linear graphs that we're trying to find crossing points. Um, but not always, you know, uh, there are worded questions uh, that uh, we'll try and throw us. The funny thing is these worded questions are still effectively graphs that cross. It just doesn't seem that way. So by the end of this particular lesson, we're going to hopefully have you construct sets of linear uh, simultaneous equations and use a suitable method to solve them. Now, by that, we can mean elimination, substitution, graphically, CAS, or uh, matrices. But matrices isn't quite in this course at this moment in time. So we'll just park that one for a second. Okay, so I'm going to turn around and say to you that basically all of these questions you can still use your CAS because the Methods 1 and 2 course is a CAS enabled course, which means you can use the calculator, but you can only use that calculator in a calculator enabled paper. So you still need to be able to do this by pen and paper. Now, one of the biggest things that trick people, and I, I stand by the fact that while the Methods 1 and 2 course is very, very full, there's a lot of questions to be done. The actual theory, the actual work behind it, isn't particularly complicated. Um, uh, that's coming from me, who has obviously done maths, but I hated maths at school. So uh, remember, just uh, I didn't like maths. It was a complete mystery to me, so I know what it's like to struggle. Um, but the point of it is, lots of people find it hard looking at worded questions and knowing what to extract. Well, I've got three, I think four examples in this video uh, that will sort of show you how I would deconstruct them and the tools I would use. And I hate to tell you this, this isn't something you just learn. It's something you have to practice. I promise you it gets better with practice because the questions are very, very formulaic. They become very, very similar the more you do. And yes, you're gonna look around you and go, yeah, but Bob over there, if he's called Bob, seems to find maths really easy. Well, they just happen to have done more practice and seem to have got more things in their head to make those links. You can too. So here's example one, the sum of two numbers. Now, it surprises me the number of people who do not know what the word sum is. It means plus, and product means time. So there you go, the sum of two numbers is 24, and the difference, again, number of people who don't know what difference means, subtract, is 96. Okay, so find the two numbers. Well, they haven't told me what these two numbers are, so I'm gonna actually say, well, they're x and y. Makes sense to me. I can call them N and M. I can call them P and Q. I can call them anything that I like. But I'm so used to simultaneous equations being X and Y. Well, I'll just use X and Y. So the sum of two numbers is 24. Well, that's easy. I can write that as an equation. X plus Y is equal to 24. And it says their difference is 96. So now my brain's going, well, well what do I do? Which is bigger? Is X bigger or Y bigger? It doesn't, oh, doesn't actually matter. So what I'm going to do say now is that x minus y must be equal to 96. Now, we could sit here and go, oh, hold on a moment, that doesn't seem to work. How on earth are they? But one of those, I think, is going to be a negative number. Um, a, a while ago, I did this question and looked at it for a while and went, oh, this can't be right. How, how is that even possible? But one of those numbers has to be negative. Um, how am I going to do this question? Well, I'm going to eliminate. How am I going to eliminate? Well, because I know that my coefficients of x are the same. So an x and an x are both a positive and a positive. So positive and positive would normally make a positive. So make them negative to take them away. So bang, bang, they disappear. y minus minus y gives me 2y. And 24 minus 96. Wow, 24 minus 96 is going to give me negative. Thank you very much. 72. So y now becomes minus 36. Well, there's my negative number. Thank you very much. What do I do now? Well, I'm going to substitute that in. I've got x plus y is equal to 24. 
So I know y is negative 36, y is minus 36 is equal to 24. So add 36 to both sides gives me 60. So there's my numbers, minus 36 and 60. We'll just check and say, is x minus y equal to 96? Well, what is x is 60 minus minus 36 just so happens to be 96. And job done, thank you very much. So I need to write this as a coordinate. No, we would write the two numbers, and excuse my bad handwriting, my two numbers, are 20, uh, sorry, are 60 and minus 36. Again, I don't need to give the order there. It's not important because so long as one of the numbers are 60 and one of them are minus 36, it is good. Now, don't press stop, not just yet, guys. This is a preview video and you've reached almost the end of it, but it does continue over on mathsguru.com. Mascara.com, yep, that's my custom website. Bits of it you can see around me at the moment. That has been designed to allow the videos to be easier searched than they are on YouTube. So you can search by chapter, by textbook. Each video has downloadable notes for you, so you can put them in your summary book or your exercise book. There are exam questions, and there is more and more content and more stuff coming as time allows. So head on over there, it's absolutely free to sign up and I'm doing everything I can to make sure that you guys enjoy maths and actually take out the mastery of maths. It is not as hard as you think, it is all smoke and mirrors. Okay, thanks very much. Take care guys, I look forward to seeing you in another video. Stay safe.